I'm Jamie and I accomplished my first semester of college back in December and I wanted to share some of the items and strategies that I used to help me get through it. Starting off with items. Earplugs. These little things were my lifesavers back in the beginning of the school year. My neighborhood is so noisy for whatever reason. There's always something happening. Back then, it was construction noises, but nowadays it's like children screaming, cars. I'm not sure if you could hear that, but there's always some kind of noise happening in my neighborhood. On extra noisy days, I put in these earplugs, and then on top, I put my headphones, and I blast really loud lo-fi music. Now, I don't necessarily recommend that you do this as well, because it can be very dangerous. When I do it, I cannot hear anything from the environment, so I will not be able to hear if there's an emergency, and I will also not be able to hear if my mom's calling me from the kitchen. The second item is my bullet journal. Now, I get stressed and anxious really easily, and one way that I would like to relieve that stress, or at least keep it under control, is by bullet journaling. I like writing down my to-do lists, and I like breaking down all of the tasks that I have in order to feel more in control and make it feel like I am not drowning in tasks even when I am. Third item on the list is my stress ball. Like I said earlier, I get really anxious. At the beginning of the semester, I hated synchronous classes. I don't even need to turn on my camera or my mic and I would just be frightened the whole hour. And when I'm anxious, I have this really bad habit of picking the skin at the corner of my nails. It's kind of gross, but one thing that stops me from doing that is my stress ball. Moving on from items, I will now be talking about apps and other things that have helped me. First is Notion. Oh my gosh, Notion is like a big lifesaver for me as well. I really like writing my notes by hand because it helps me remember the topics better. But when I'm in synchronous classes, I can't just pause the audio like a normal recorded video. So I just type because I type faster than I write. This is where I put all of my lessons, my deadlines, my schedules especially. This was really helpful for me because back when I was only writing down my notes, my wrist started to hurt really bad. I thought I had actually injured it and we almost went to the doctor for it. But when I started just typing out my notes and gave my poor right wrist a break, you know, it got better. And this is also where I draft my essays. Really helpful. If you want to see my Notion set up in a different video, please let me know in the comments. The next app or service kind of thing is Grammarly. A lot of people are on the fence about Grammarly. Some people love it, some people hate it, and I am one of the people that love it. It is Oh my gosh, I, I'm gonna say this so much, it saved my grades. I have this subject called zoology and for our exams, we need to write a lot of essays. I used this app to make sure that I was making sense because half of the time I wasn't and Grammarly was the one that pointed it out for me. It's honestly a very, like not mindless, but very convenient process for me. It's like I copy my drafts from Notion and then I paste it into Grammarly and I just click all of the suggestions and I'm done with the essay. Pretty good, pretty convenient. Thank you, Grammarly. The one I'm going to be talking about next isn't necessarily an app, it is on YouTube. It is the 24 seven lo-fi radio. When reviewing for exams, I get bored when I don't listen to music, but when I listen to music with lyrics, I get distracted. Having the 24-7 radio is actually very convenient for me because the music just keeps playing and I don't need to choose playlists or keep switching tabs to change the song. I also realized that listening to lo-fi music is really helpful for calming down my anxiety as I take my exams and quizzes on Google Forms. Because for some reason, I get so scared and anxious every time I answer something on Google Forms. Next up, and this is my favorite, I'm so glad I found this. It is guided meditation for sleep. Eight hours of sleep is my non-negotiable, and it is my only non-negotiable. If I do not get eight hours of sleep, my immune system will start a riot, and I am not joking about that. Actually, it is my psychology professor that introduced me to this. We were having lessons about altered states of mind, I think. Instead of a lecture video about meditation, she just gave us an actual meditation video because there's no better way of learning than actually trying it. So one night when I decided to listen to the meditation video, 20 minutes in and then I'm out. It was so amazing to me. I, it was probably the best sleep I've ever had in months. I've slept, I've never, I don't think I've ever slept that peacefully before. It felt like I was listening to meditation and then the next thing I know it was morning. It was so good. I could not recommend this enough. If you're having a hard time falling asleep, maybe I suggest trying this. Especially this dude named Jason Stevenson. 
Oh my gosh, this guy probably puts like melatonin or something in his videos because I can never reach the end of his videos without falling asleep. It's that good. I love it. Go try it. Finally, here are the practices or strategies that I did to make my first semester a little bit better. The first under this category is being the person that breaks the ice. Now, you have probably gathered by now that I hate synchronous classes. So this was very difficult for me to do. However, when our professor puts us in breakout rooms, it is really important that someone breaks the ice because it will save you a lot of time and it will help you avoid the awkward silences that comes with breakout rooms. It actually gives you more time to discuss the things that you're going to be doing. Even just typing in the chat box will help. Next up is deleting TikTok. I know if you love TikTok like I do, you're not gonna like hearing this, but this app ate all of my time. Every time I was scrolling on TikTok, I would always just tell myself, oh, maybe five more minutes, five more minutes. And then the five minutes turned into an hour, and then the hour turned into me not doing my tasks anymore for the day. So when I deleted TikTok, I actually noticed myself getting bored on my phone, and that forced me to really do my activities. Next is writing your notes as if you're going to give it to someone. Now this is very similar to that study hack where they say you should teach someone the lesson so that you'll get a better grip at it. This is like that but written. So basically what I do is I make my notes as neat and understandable as possible. I annotate everything and put definitions for big words and make sure I properly expound on all of the topics to make sure it is very understandable. Doing this helped me get a better grip on the topics that I was learning, especially because I was writing it down. I feel like that's also the big reason why it was very helpful for me. Following that is making sure I get at least 8 hours of sleep. As I said earlier, getting this amount of sleep is my only non-negotiable. It doesn't matter if I'm going to sleep at 7pm or 2am, I need to get that 8 hours of sleep. I swear every time back in high school, I always get sick. And it's mainly because I put myself under so much stress and I do not let myself rest. I've learned that resting is the most important part of learning. You will not be able to properly remember everything that you've learned if you did not rest. Resting helps your, your brain repair, you know? It's good for your brain, so try to get as much sleep as you can. There are also instances where I only get like maybe 5 hours of sleep, but I did not suffer as much the next day because I wasn't in much sleep debt. Next is, I started doing tasks in the morning. People usually say that they're a morning person or a night owl, but I'm neither. I am an afternoon person. That basically means I'm just the most productive and I get the most things done during the afternoon. But I notice that I feel better about myself and I get more done when I start doing things in the morning. This sounds kind of obvious, but it makes a really big difference especially when you're rushing requirements for finals. Now finally, the last thing on my list is doing mass practice during the daytime and the Pomodoro technique at night or when I'm doing all-nighters. At first, I thought the Pomodoro technique was not for me because I was always just thinking about the 5 minute break time that I was going to have and I was just gonna get distracted and then the 5 minute break is not enough for me. Turns out I was just doing it at the wrong time of day. When I'm alert and doing tasks in the daytime, I usually just do mass practice. Mass practice is essentially just studying as much as I can in one sitting. But on the times that I decide to continue my study session at night, I need to do the Pomodoro technique to make sure that I'm still present and actually understanding what I'm reading. The breaks in between allow me to process the things I'm reading and, you know, maybe give myself a few gentle slaps on the face to wake myself up. Now, that is everything on my list. I hope you're still with me. If you have any thoughts on the things that I've mentioned, I'd love to hear them in the comments. And if you want to stay updated and see me complain about college, you can follow me on Instagram. I am very active over there and you will see that I post a lot about college over there. Anyway, that is all and thank you for watching.